Hey guys, welcome to another video on the Slightly Modified YouTube channel. Is your E46 acting up on you? Because if it is, we hope it's the fuel pump because that's what we're going to be working on today. Now, with this car, there was a few symptoms that started going on to help us realize that, hey, maybe the fuel pump's bad. Now, this is not my car. This is my girlfriend's car. As you guys can see, we've been doing a bunch of stuff to this car for my girlfriend. She drives it. She loves it. I'm trying to tell her to get rid of it because it's a BMW, but she likes it. So... Tell us what was going on with the fuel pump. Uh, well, I just started having problems starting it at first, and then one night I was driving home and it just completely shut off. So thank God it started again just for a minute. I got it home and now it's been sitting in the driveway since, so. Well, let's try to fire it up, see if it'll start. Give her a crank. Yeah. Okay, pop the hood. So, we are going to go through a few troubleshooting techniques. So, first things first, we're gonna say what's up to a uh, good old brake cleaner. Now, uh, if your hood is popped, okay. we'll show you guys what's up with that. So, ooh, excuse this engine bay. Okay, so, um, you could probably just take your whole air box off if you want to, but I seen a couple clips right here, one on this side and one on that side. We're gonna go ahead and see if we could pop those off. Let me grab a screwdriver, I use it as my pry bar. So we're gonna pry these off. There's one. Oh, that was way easier than I thought. And then there's two. Okay. Okay, so now you have this. So this is your mass airflow sensor. So I wouldn't recommend spraying brake cleaner directly on it. So it comes in from the top. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some and we're gonna spray it kind of on the bottom of that like honeycomb stuff and then I'm gonna have her crank the car. Give her a little spray. All right, crank it. Okay, you hear I started up for a second? And that means that it's definitely a fuel issue. So the next thing you wanna check is you wanna go ahead and check your fuse. Now, um, if you have a multimeter, cool, if not, um, you're obviously gonna have to try to work around that, but I do have a multimeter, so we're gonna check that out right now. Okay, so we have our multimeter here. Um, you could either pull the fuse out and physically look at it, you'll be able to see if it's bad or not. Um, on this 2002 E46, uh, the fuse number is 54. It's gonna head, it's gonna go ahead and be, you see how there's like the center divider thing right here? It's gonna have the number 20 on it. Now I can pull it out and look at it, or, you can take my multimeter, I can put it on the continuity setting. So all that does is it lets you know if there is a path of travel. So if you test these two together, it will beep. So basically all you gotta do is touch it on each side of your fuse, like this, and it beeps. So that's saying that our fuse is good. So now we're gonna go ahead and make sure that the wiring to the fuel pump is good. So you stay right there, Kat. Uh, we're gonna pull out the back seat real quick. You just pull up on the front and then it kind of scoops up and out So we kind of already had it off. So we'll kind of just put it and get it out of the way So we pull this up right here. Here's your fuel pump. This is on the passenger side You got four 10 millimeter bolts. So we're gonna go ahead and take that off I already have them loose just to make life easier Okay, so now you expose a couple things. Here is your fuel pump hanger assembly. Uh, this is your outlet to your motor. Here's your plug. And then here's like a little, little hooky so you can pull on it. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna take this plug off and we're gonna check for power. Okay, so I went ahead and got a little flathead screwdriver. This is one of those Johnnies where the side pulls out. And then once you pull the side out, then you can pull the clip up. So you gotta take that, pry it out. Once you pry that out, your plug will come right up. So now if you notice on this plug, there are four pins, right? So the two pins that are far spaced out on the left, those are gonna be your uh, fuel level sender to your dash. And then the two close together on the right, they're gonna be the positive and the negative for your fuel pump. So when you turn this on, when you turn your key to the on position, your car is gonna prime the fuel pump. So the fuel pump, 
will prime for, I don't know, three to four seconds. We're gonna go ahead and find those two pins right here on our plug. We're gonna take our voltmeter. We're going to stick it to DC volts right there. The, the V with the little uh, straight line and the dotted line. We're gonna take our two leads. We are going to stick them in the positive and the negative. Now, it doesn't really matter which one. Uh, your meter will just show a negative if the if the polarity is backwards. So I got those jammed in there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have Cat turn the key to the on position, and we're gonna see if we see 12 volts. So you got 12 volts, one, two, three, and then it goes to zero. That means it's primed. So once she turns the key, you should get 12 volts again, a constant 12 volts, and your fuel pump should be running once you turn, like, try to start it. So we know that um, we know that it starts a brake cleaner, so it's a fuel problem. We know that the fuse is good, and we know that it's getting power. So we're just gonna stop beating around the bush. The fuel pump is bad. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this out. Now, this is where Cat comes in. So to pull this fuel pump out, it's actually pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy. All you gotta do is you have to loosen this locking collar. Uh, so I'll show you how to do that. And then you're gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver to take off this clamp. Now be careful, there will be fuel in this. So you gotta kinda tuck it up there to so where it doesn't spill all over the place. So you're up, let's do this. So the tools you're gonna need, obviously, you're gonna need that 10 mil to take off the cover. You're gonna need this big flathead, I'll show you in a second, the Phillips to take off of the screw. Okay, first things first, there's this locking collar. Now you might be able to get lucky and do it by hand, which is not the case, it should be tight. So either you could buy a special tool online to get this off or you could just do it the, uh, the half-assed cheap way. So what I'm gonna have Cat do is stick this right here or right here and I'm gonna have her tap it with a hammer and break it loose. Oops, sorry. There you go, there you go. Okay, that's cool. Leave it right there. Now I take your Phillips. <clears throat> Might spill fuel all over. Yeah, it's okay. See, your car's gonna smell like fuel. I just loosen it, right? I don't need to. No, you just loosen up. it. Loosen it so you can just slide it back here. Get it out of the way. Because I don't want that box. How? Why? How am I wearing gloves and you're not? You want some gloves? I'm fine. Do you want your hand to smell like gloves? Your hand to smell like gas all day? <laughs> all right. Well, guess that's on you. Slide that clamp all the way back. Get out of your way. Now we're gonna pull that hose off. I can. Yeah. I don't think I can. It might be a pain. My fingers are. What I do is I don't want to. I don't want to break the rubber, but I kind of just took this here. Hold the camera. Kind of took this. And it slow. That's actually how I, I cut myself. So look at that, see? Exactly the choo -choo. Gotta be gentle because if you break this hose. Ow, see, I just did it again, look. Fucking A. You didn't learn the first ah, time. Or the second time, or the third time. And you wanted me to do that? I already, no, I wasn't gonna let you use the screwdriver. That's why, I, look, I'm bleeding three different places now. And, okay, all right. You're supposed to be doing this. Keep going. All right, take your collar off. Wait. While she's doing that, I want to note. I think that blue line's for EVAP. I want to note that you need to pay attention to this orientation. So as you can see, this plastic goes in between these little marks right here. And this is almost straight. I guess and then you have your little finger hook right here so I'm gonna have her go ahead and pull this out now you got to be very be care careful because when you come out there's a fuel pump uh, level right here so you got to be very careful that you don't break it obviously we have a new one so I'm gonna tell cat to go to town on this there you go okay so now you got to kind of pay attention to what's trying to come out so in the front you have your suction hose coming out of your fuel pump so you gotta kinda move that out of the way. Like kinda pull it in. There you go. Okay, now keep it straight. There's a gasket. Yeah, that's okay. 
Now your fuel level sender is gonna wanna come out, so you're gonna have to hook that out. So just kind of bring it this way. There you go. You can leave the gasket on there, it's fine. Now what am I stuck on? You're stuck on the strainer right now. There you go, get that half out. I'll get the other half out. Okay. Sweet, and now tilt it because your sender is caught. See your sender on this line? Yeah, mm -hmm. be very careful. So hold it up directly the way it's supposed to go and you see how this kind of hangs over? So you wanna make sure if you're gonna use the same one, you don't damage this. But uh, we have a new one and we have a new gasket too. So let me show you what I got. Let me get this out of here because it smells bad. We got a China special right here. We're gonna take this and throw it in. Take the little bag off the level. Brand new. Now the reason why we got the whole thing is because the fuel pump alone was 45 bucks and then the whole hanger was only 50. So we just decided to get the whole hanger. Um, now it's a gamble whether the fuel pump in there is actually like a somewhat decent fuel pump or not um, versus the one that they were selling for 40 bucks. I could have just replaced it. It would have been really easy. But uh, I read their views on it and they said this unit actually was not bad. So, so you're gonna go ahead and tip it in, put this in first and then kind of hook it in. So this, Right here is your gasket. So that's gonna go. And we're gonna put this. we're gonna put this right here. Yeah, but this we're gonna because it needs to kind of hook around this little assembly here. See, there you go. Now it's in and it's good. Use a little bit of fuel, kind of just so it slides in a little easier. Go for it. Yeah, hook that in. Now get your strainer in. Now, when you make sure you push this down, you don't want to force it. It, it Make sure it wants to fall down into place. No, don't, don't twist it. You want to keep your... To. See that? Yep. Perfect. So make sure you're not squishing it. There you go. See how it's kind of falling down on its own? Now you go ahead and just give it a push on all sides evenly. Oh. Let me get that out of the way for you again. What I do is I just bent it and I kind of shoved it back here. That way it kind of seals itself off. How's that? I think it's pretty good. Nice and even. Lining up. And it's in there. Yep. See, this is what I'm having a hard time on my E36. Luckily, these come metal. In the E36, they're plastic and it's super easy to cross thread. Tighten it as tight as you can by hand. And then you give it the old one, two, tighter roo. Gotta make sure this is tight or else your car's gonna smell like fuel. Yeah. Like, like mine. Like yours. Yep. I can't believe it. We've been working on this car. My car has the exact same problem. Uh, and uh, I right. haven't touched it in over a year. Now I'll make it tighter. Tighter? Yeah. Move back one. There you go. You're gonna have more, more grab. Hit it hard. Hit it like you're mad at it. No. I'm gonna hit my hand. Slide your what's called back on. Shoot, that's just about it, guys. Oh. Oh. This fuel pump is from an E36. This fuel pump is not the same size as an E46. So as you can see, here's her hanger assembly, and here's the 36 pump. Now, it has the same orientation, the same everything, but I did not want to chance it because it did not fit in her hanger right. So I just slapped it in there and made sure it was good and um, it fired right up and I drove around the block, it drove fine. So I just went ahead and got her the correct pump for her E46 and now we're just gonna keep this 36 pump as a backup. Um, we'll hold on to this hanger for a couple weeks just to make sure that um, her fuel level sender is not acting up because if it starts acting up then we'll have to put that pump in here. But I think we should be fine on that. We checked the gas earlier. We had about a three quarter tank. What do we have now? Three quarter tank. Three yep, left. so the level sender is working fine. Her check engine light is on. What the fuck? Yeah, I was um, just gonna say that. <laughs> it's we were messing with it, starting the car and stuff. Should we turn it off and turn it on soon? Uh, no, I think the check engine light should turn off by itself, but uh, we'll run the code. If it's a misfire code, it's understandable because we were over there freaking uh, <laughs> spraying brake cleaner in there and stuff, so. So we'll, we'll see about that, but car runs fine. 
there's no misfire i think we're pretty good we're gonna clean this up and we're gonna drive to the store so we'll catch you guys when we uh head to the store we gotta pick up some dry cleaning all right we're just driving this bad boy we're going to la right now and uh this old girl drives pretty good she drives completely normal washed it Woo! yeah she feels good hey look guys that's me that's me right there that's old how old is that how old is that four and a half years old five years Whoa! Five years, that's love guys. All right. Well, yeah, she's running good. Um, the fuel pump, no complaints. Actually, she's been driving this car for like a week already. So we're back up and running. Woo! All right guys, pretty much gonna wrap it up for this video. Um, if you watched it and you liked it, go ahead and leave a like, comment, maybe a subscribe, maybe. So uh, we're out, we gotta go to LA and we'll catch you guys later. I, Sharon Garza, slightly modified. I'm out, peace.